This is what I love about the Jordan world in general. Is the dark one really a dark one? Is, is, are the Aes Sedai's really good? Uh, we're here today to talk about the Wheel of Time. Um, so, um, you know, uh, this next week's episode, uh, a lot of big things happen, obviously. Um, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about a couple of the sequences that happen in this episode, if that's okay. Um, uh, the first is, um, you know, there's a big confrontation between Moraine and uh, Swan. Uh, I, I always say her name wrong because I read these books <laughs> when I was a kid and I... Swan. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, Swan. Uh, I always call it like Swain. I'm like, that's not <laughs> it. That's not it at all. Um, and they have a confrontation. And, you know, the show has done a very fantastic job of building the relationship between those two characters. And then in this episode, it all comes, you know, uh, to a head. Uh, so uh, what uh, were you trying to bring to those scenes? And um uh, how exactly did you try to depict like the the various layers that went into because because there's a lot of layers to the scene so I'm going to shut up now. Moraine and Siwan um, have a really deep relationship, but I think this is the first time, especially in season two, where we really get to see how far back it goes and how deep their connection. Um, is and I think that's so important because there's so many layers of betrayal and you know Siwan disappointed in Moraine and and then also there are moments where we saw that maybe they could have had like a normal life and you know um, I'll be your fish wife and that sort of thing and then every all hell breaks loose and I feel like Rosamund Pike and Sophie Okaneda do such a great job. I loved working um, with them on the scenes. And, you know, it's just one of those things in which we really get to, to get a sense of what they went through and let alone Moraine, because I feel like season two is the first time we really get a sense of Moraine's backstory. We meet her sister. We understand kind of certain family dynamics. And now we truly understand her love life as well as what Lan is to her and what Lan is not to her. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Moraine's, uh, you know, back history, uh, there was a departure in the books in which uh, her nephew is revealed to be a dark friend. Uh, what went into that kind of deviation from the plot? And, you know, what importance do you think that has on the, you know, on Moraine and, you know, that family dynamic? Right. Um, I think what we learn when we find out that her nephew, Moraine's nephew is a dark friend is that despite the fact that he's blood family, so to speak, Moraine is always going to be on a mission and she will do whatever it takes to make sure that the dark forces don't take over mm -hmm. and, and protect the people she needs to protect. So I feel like we see that she truly is a woman on a mission and it really doesn't matter if it's family or not. Um, in terms of the departure of the books, um, again, you know, we're in series, books are blueprint and everything has to kind of make, you know, make sense um, from a dramatic standpoint. I actually really enjoyed that reveal. I was mm -hmm. surprised um, and it was fun to, to shoot because then you realize how deep the dark friend kind of goes in. I mean, when Leandrin shows up at Moraine's sister's house, I mean, I got chills when I saw Kate Fleetwood show up and she just did such a great job um, as the character. She's looking at her portrait and sitting with, with the sister. So I think those kind of things are just great drama and great story. It really was. Um, there, you know, uh, Speaking of departures from the books, but like in a good way, Lanfear has had a much bigger role this season than she did in the books. And, you know, she's much more prominent in this season. Like she's the first, you know, first of the Forsaken the, to really like intersect with Rand and the other characters in the books like this. But you've really drawn out like, uh, you know, sides of her personality that we often don't really get to see in that book. And, you know, you directed a lot of those episodes where we get to see like Lanfear unleashed. And, um, you know, I, I kind of wanted to... Um, um, 
see how you felt about uh, this version of Lanfear, what her motivations are, and you know how she's kind of playing both sides because this episode ends with Lanfear taking Rand and Moraine into the ways, which is you know that's that is a very unlikely alliance. This is what I love about the Jordan world in general is the ambiguity of character. Like, is the dark one really a dark one? Is is are the Aes Sedai's really good? I mean, for example, the white cloaks believe the Aes Sedai's are evil, mm-hmm. right? And they believe that they're good. So this goes into who Lanfear is. You know, the characters like Lanfear, and especially the way Natasha O'Keefe plays Lanfear, we really feel for her. She has a side and she has her own mission and she believes it's a good mission and capturing her and just like going from Celine to Lanfear. That's the thing that I wanted to bring to the table from a visual standpoint is really capturing her like a rock star. Like mm-hmm. she walks through the four gate and she's blowing stuff up. Like she's, you know, David Bowie type of thing. Um, There has to have that kind of rock and roll element to it for her to kind of have that swagger at the same time she has her own ideas of what she wants to do and her relationship with the shamael and how far she wants to go and that is what's dangerous about this whole world because you know there are going to be dark friends who are going to be unleashed and each and every one of them has their own you know um theory as to why they're doing things and they believe they're actually good people are are you at all surprised about how the fandom has embraced this version of land fear and like there uh to to use the internet vernacular there's a lot of stands for land fear this season and um are are you surprised at all by that the stands i have been learned so much of this internet talk but yes i am not, i am not surprised i find her so pleasurable to watch i find the stories are well crafted they're dramatically um, sound and intriguing. So it's for me as a filmmaker to capture it the right way. And I want them like, I can't wait for people to see Lanfear in episode seven because everything was done with intention. She has the strength. She is interesting. She is sultry. We find her sexy, even though she's bad maybe, but she thinks she's good. Um, There's just so much. So I'm excited that everybody is enjoying her and especially from going from Celine to Lanfear. Yeah, no, she land it, it, she's just been an absolute joy to watch the the last few episodes. Um uh so one last sequence that I wanted to touch base on. Uh in this, you know, episode we have Matt and Ish uh Ish. Ish- oh, my- thank you. <laughs> thank you. I I cannot stress how terrible it is to like be like a book reader and have never Moraine, heard... Egwene, Le- you know, it's like when when I saw like I remember watching the first episode and was like naive and I'm like, what? Like I literally like my mouth dropped and I was watching it with my wife and she's like, what, 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 what does that? I was like, that is not how that word. And I like showed her. She's like, no, that's very clearly naive. I'm like, no, no. It's- reading the books and you had your own pronunciation yeah so this is all this is all this is this is all terrible doing these like videos and stuff like that because like i'm just like i'm going to butcher every last one of these names and there's clear video evidence that i'm saying it wrong and i'm just going to keep on butchering it um (laughs) but uh we we see uh but getting back to the point sorry that you know like (laughs) I'm just apologizing for my terrible video uh, video uh, pronunciations. So we have a, a, a couple of very important scenes with Matt, and you know, one those are interactions you know that that's you know totally new to the canon to some level. But more importantly, you know, we we see like a very classic like temptation where Matt gets tempted by the you know like the the you know the dark side, the dark one, uh, in in a lot of a lot of ways, and. You know, while Matt is expecting to learn more about himself, instead there's like this twist in which, you know, Matt instead like interacts with his mother. Uh, what went into that, you know, sequence? What uh, what was the purpose of that in the context of the episode? And, you know, what do you think it says about Matt's character? Well, in episode seven, Matt drinks a tea given mm-hmm. to him by Ishamayal, right? Mm-hmm. And winds up having these kind of, a trip, a hallucination. Yeah. So to speak. Um, the encounters, he's encountering 
his past lives. And if you really think about it, um, and I just wanted to bring clarity on it, is that Mm -hmm. in Jordan's world, reincarnation is a big theme. This is one of the themes. And it really kind of taps into Matt's low Mm self-esteem. He has a very low self-esteem. He's kind of like, you know what? I'm a bad person. So why am I even trying? I'm not a good person. I have low self-esteem. I don't feel like I fit anywhere. So I think it plays into it because when he looks and sees the past lives and what comes through the hallucinations is darkness. But of course, Ishamael, the king of lies, is the one who kind of gave him the tea. So is that really the true nature of Matt? I I think we're going to find out, especially in the finale. (laughs) Uh, So I have, I have one more question for you. And this is when I was, you know, doing some research about this, I didn't realize that you are also involved in the Lord of the Rings uh, series. Uh, So can I ask you really quickly, you know, what are the differences between filming the wheel of time and filming a series like uh, Lord of the Rings? Because we, you know, we, they're both on, you know, Amazon studios produces very, uh, both of them, but they have to be entirely like different experiences. And, you know, I, I, I think that would make for like a fascinating, <laughs> you know, story. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, when you think about it, content, like we have a lot of cop shows, we have a lot of drama shows and they're all different from each other. Some are similar, some are different. Now, when it comes to the fantasy world, because they're not such a plethora of these shows, when you have just a few, we all compare them when they're really just completely different stories, different worlds. When you take Rings of Power, um, it's based off of obviously the Lord of the Rings, Tolkien's work, which is completely different from Jordan's work. Jordan was like leaning into Eastern philosophies, kind of like a smorgasbord of different thought process. And then you have Tolkien, who's like really focused on European mythology, you know, Anglo-Saxon literature. I mean, he was he was a you know a great great writer. So. That in term, in terms of the story and the style and the vibe of the show becomes extremely different. Um, I was saying that for my references for Rings of Power, I was looking at classical paintings like of Poussin um, as an example. Um, And then uh, for Wheel of Time, it was more like the early cubism of Picasso. Do you see what I mean? They're yeah, no, that's really that's really interesting. So oh. it's like my references as a filmmaker were completely different because they're completely different style of shows, um, which I love to do. And the worlds are different. They're, the themes, even though there's like good and evil, Wheel of Time has a different theme that's really roped into kind of the reincarnation and then... Um, you know, cutting the wheel, you know, Ishmael's like, I don't want to be part of this anymore. And then you you go over to Rings of Power and it's really about the journey into Middle Earth and then, you know, saving everybody from the 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 evil that is there. So it's completely two different experiences for me. Okay. Well, thank you. That's that's all the time I have, but this was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. 